checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. One thing, and Tom, I, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm a hater or a crybaby or anything like this here, but I didn't say anything this week when Brian would be talking about Brian Danielson, and I usually don't when he's talking about him, and he talks about the fact that, boy, he's in such bad shape, and his body was going numb, and his legs are numb, and I always want to jump in and go, he shouldn't be wrestling. Why are they allowing him to wrestle? This shouldn't be the case. You know, there's a guy who's had seizures, all this sort of stuff, and I think Brian Danielson more than anybody else in the history of wrestling, won wrestling. Like, no matter what WWE did to him, he was unsinkable. Before he got to WWE, he was already on the mountaintop of somebody that was going to go down in lore of he'll never get a chance in WWE, but this is the greatest wrestler that should have had a chance. He got the chance. He took it, and actually, he got the hot girl he got the title he got all of these things that go with it and like every athlete there is a cost to that which was the body but everything else more than anybody else maybe Lupez, i don't know but like there's no scandal with brian with brian danielson there's none of that stuff and i love it and he should be able to do what he wanted and i thought when wwe held him back because they had doctors that said you can't go anymore he had doctors that said, yes, he can. I was for them releasing him because, you know, even though I don't like it, what can I say? I'd be hypocritical as a boxing fan to say somebody was in there too long. God, it's boxing. You know what I mean? So if a doctor said he was cleared, he should have that right. You know, a state might not have to license it, but he's got that right. But with all that said... With all of this being talked about, and I know it was getting towards the end of his in-ring career, should they have pumped the brakes on Brian Danielson if truly, if he was truly going that numb and having these issues where we've seen it in wrestling, unfortunately, one bump could leave somebody in that ring forever. Should they have? Should they have actually, even though they had the plan here? not let this actually go to the end you take that risk with every single match you know i True. think that's i True. think that's where it lies i mean think about what we've seen we've seen paraguayo jr you know pass away we really yeah. still can't even tell exactly what had happened uh yoshihiro takiyama a guy who took just insane abuse throughout his career can't walk because of a sunset flip that he was doing we've seen masawa decapitated in ring with a you know a cervical decapitation um but we've also seen a number of people make it through their whole careers and come out unscathed largely on the other end in a lot of ways what you know relatively so yeah uh, there, you know there's a number of luchadors that can still wrestle later on in their careers many 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 in fact they got the highest percentage by far take a look at a guy you know you're talking about brian danielson being somebody without a bunch of scandals um you know he achieved great heights in ring People respect his abilities as a wrestler. Rookie Steamboat is another guy who I would kind of throw into that God same bless. mold. Yes. Right? And he can still, you know, it looks like he can still move around pretty well. So both sides of the coin are out there. And there's no way to tell exactly what's going to happen when you step in the ring. You know, you could be, your body could be absolutely thrashed and you can make it through a match no problem. You could go in there you know, having the best physical day of your life and then have one accident and it's all over. Look at, you know, Kota Ibushi at one point was in tip-top physical shape. One of the best physical specimens on the planet. And it took one Phoenix Splash gone awry to kind of derail his career. Hayabusa, at the height of his popularity, 
landed on his head and his career was over. So, you know, you can't really tell. You can't tell. It doesn't matter if you're healthy. It doesn't matter if you're beat up. You're taking that risk every time you step in there. And I don't know that he's really any more beat up than anybody else on that roster is, you know. Well, what do me- like, you say? Thing, what, you know. Yeah, but I mean, is that a work? This is this is my point. You know well, what I mean? Then, then is this I would part say of the storyline? But, but, because no, we've well, seen even because we've even seen him. No, if if that's what they're reporting, no. If Brian said it as you know, hey, this guy is banged. If he's actually weaving that into how he's talking about his physical condition, like then that's actually terrible on Brian's end. You know, it would be unintentional, I think. But like, you know, no, I, you know, I, I that no. If he was actually to that point and. Again, he's got an MRI coming up here. And the only thing I would actually argue, too, on the guys that you named were, like Brian Danielson, nobody, for the most part, could tell any of those guys anything. And, like, Masawa was the boss. Who knows what kind of condition he was in, but all of those guys had a lot of miles on him in the same way that that Brian Danielson did. And does, obviously. Yeah, but part of my point is that you don't necessarily even need to have the miles. True. Wrestling's dangerous yeah, enough. It's dangerous, yes. you know. I don't. I don't know that. It, a lot of it depends on the exact match you're in, the style of the match, the the other person that you're in there with. I mean, I don't know that really wrestling anymore is any more dangerous if you're kind of beat up, you know, as compared to being, you know, healthy. And. Danielson is going to have an MRI because the state of his neck is not good. And uh, Dave Meltzer in this week's Wrestling Observer newsletter, which is up today, fresh for subscribers over over at WrestlingObserver.com. He's going, obviously, to find out what level of damage uh, is taking place to compare it to the last MRI to see if anything has gotten worse. And if so, by how much. There is hope that he does not need surgery and can heal up strong enough with stem cell therapy treatment. And if not, he's going to have to undergo surgery. And then when he returns to the ring is going to be really in question because, yes, with the miracles of modern technology and and his strength of the neck, I'm, I'm sure that he has muscle, all that stuff. There's positives on his end, but. It's also surgery on his neck at his age where there's a possibility that he may not be able to come back. So we've seen the last of his in-ring full-time career. We don't think we've seen the end of his career altogether, but it is going to be interesting to see if he has to have that surgery and how long he's going to be out for. Yeah, and it's tough. I mean, it could be a neck injury you know it could be like the vertebrae could be a pinched nerve could be something like you know spinal stenosis maybe that causes you know lack of strength i could see him having those limbs (laughs) yeah well and they're all they're all treatable at variable levels you know what i mean but i think at any age you want to try to avoid surgery so hopefully it's not something that requires that especially you know like how old is is Danielson? Mid forties. Something now, like that. You know, he's been looking forward to being off the road and being at home with his family. Well, you don't want to be at home with your family while you're just laying around. It's not that much fun. So You've done this. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully he doesn't need the surgery. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.